What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike and Chris show. We have a great Welcome. one for you today. Oh, such a good one. Such a good one. A very important question that we get asked all the time. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, how are you doing, baby? You're looking good in your little gold sequin. I got fancy today. I got fancy trench for coat, you all. shirt. <laughs> jacket. It's called a duster. Duster. Remember when I was telling you I got a sequin duster? This is what I meant. Why does it? Why is it called duster? I am guessing, just a guess, that it like can dust the it like dust the floor if you know what I mean. Because this is long. Okay, now we're definitely gonna have to look that up. A hundred percent. Now I'm so. You I say didn't dust think about it until you said that, and I was like, I bet it's because it can dust like dust the floor. Maybe. <laughs> and if so, that would be clever. Maybe we're wrong. I don't yeah. know. When you said duster, I thought of dust ruffle. Something I haven't thought of in a very long oh, time. Those were like 80s, 90s. Thanks, mom, yeah. in the 80s. Yep, I had dust, dust ruffle. Dust ruffle. That's the thing that, <laughs> what, covered, it was like. It went like underneath the mattress to like the floor, right? So it covered up underneath the bed. Yes. So you could like stash tons of stuff. Because we used make, to store everything under our beds. Or make the most super cool fort oh, ever. Oh, yeah, hiding place. When you're small enough to fit under your bed, that yeah. is. Yep, exactly. I can't do it anymore. Christian just gets mad at me. <laughs> Dogs freak out. I'd like to see you try to fit under a bed. Dogs are like, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Check <laughs> under the bed. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, yes, you look beautiful. And, well, thank you. Uh, I'm in my typical, what do you call it? My I call uniform. this as uniform. So every... Every day, pretty much, unless Not it's like every rain. Day. Unless it's like rain. I think you're super smart though, because I love tank tops. Yeah, it's a tank top, cargo shorts, tennis shoes. I love cargo you have to shorts. Make fewer decisions during the day. Well, you know we live I mean? in California. Generally, yeah. it's pretty warm out, and even when it isn't, I'm that weird, freaky dude that's He's out the at the farmers market the when it's <laughs> when it's sprinkling, and everyone's looking at me like, "What is wrong with you?" Uh -huh. I'm like, I am hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot. -blooded. You run hot, though. Help me. I do run hot. Yeah. That's my problem, I guess. I remember back when you were working as a firefighter, there was a significant difference when I was sleeping in the bed when you were at work and when you were home versus like heat wise. You yeah. are a heater. I put out You're a lot a heater, of heat. For sure. Yeah. That's really, it's kind of strange, but it's a thing, I guess. It's a thing. Exactly. Well, it is with me. Mm hmm. Hopefully, I'm not going to die. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. So, yeah. what are you up to this week, sweetie? I'm working a lot on our online total gut reset course and working on finalizing a job posting because we need some really good help okay. in order to get this launched. I like good help. That's what I got going on. I so like I've been help. powering away on that. Okay. How about you? You had something big happen this week. I spent uh, eight hours straight in a dentist chair. My I'm in the I'm in the process of getting veneers. Um, they're not done yet getting veneers on uh, my top teeth and it's a process it's, it's something i've been wanting for a very long time and uh, it's taken me a lot of work to get to where i'm at now to where i can actually get them because for whatever reason growing up i had a lot of like teeth problems runs in my a family a lot of people can resonate runs with that. in my family that's like how my mom is dad my bro are the same and um, there was a lot of things that I needed to get fixed. So although I wanted veneers many, many years ago, it wasn't until somewhat recently until I could Process. finally get them. So mm -hmm. I'll talk more about it when it's all finished. But yeah, it was literally, I mean, I got there at nine and I didn't leave till five. Yeah, I picked you up at five. And besides a couple bathroom breaks, um, it was just nonstop because a veneer is like, in order to put them on, you got to think about it. They have to kind of like grind down your teeth. And it's so permanent. That's why you have temporaries in. Make sure you love them. Make sure nothing needs to be changed. Right. You know? So right now I have these temporaries mm -hmm. in. I need to see how I do with them because they can change the way you talk. Myself, um, I I used to grind my teeth a lot. Oh, a lot. It makes me like. Ever oh, since I was shudder. a kid. <laughs> um that noise and I didn't realize until I got these like temporaries in that I really ground down my teeth to where they're they're kind of short or quite a bit shorter than let's say the average tooth a regular size <laughs> tooth whatever that is um so it has been a little interesting I realized it was going to be different because my teeth were going to be longer because there were more 
regular or normal shapes. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. They you look know? great. Those um, are only temporaries and they look amazing. Yeah. So I'll talk more about it. Whites. But yeah, I'm just glad I, I have a really cool dentist. And um, I'm going to be completely honest. Being in the dentist chair, like I, because I had so many tooth problems as a kid, I was always at the dentist. I was always, always had cavities mm-hmm. and I would get anxious. I get anxious a lot in the chair. And I found nitrous. And I'll tell you what, if you have anxiety towards dentistry, think about getting nitrous. Talk to your dentist about it. A lot of dentists do that now. Yeah. Yeah. It made my eight hour sitting so much more comfortable. It's easy. They just put it on there. It's this little nose thing that goes on. And um, you just don't care as much. And I'll take that because eight rather, hours in a dentist chair. I was actually pretty comfortable, Good. to be completely honest. That's awesome. So it's always an option. Yeah. Yeah. Happy for you, babe. Anyways, let's talk about what we want to get to here because this is a very important question. And yes. Talk about that. Oh my gosh. It's one of, I would say, by far the most common questions that I get. And it's when someone is reaching out for someone else and asking, like, how can they help their child, their partner, their best friend, whoever it is, their loved one that they really care about? How can they get them to change their life? And we both have a lot of experience with that. Can we dive right into it? Absolutely. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a very challenging and important oh, yeah. question. Absolutely. So the first thing, if this is something that you struggle with and... You know, someone you know is not feeling their best, is struggling with their health, anything like that, and you want them to make changes and you think you might know what they need or whatever it is, the first thing I would recommend is putting yourself in their shoes and think back on a time when you were given advice that you didn't ask for. Can you think back on a time? (laughs) Everyone can, I feel like. All the time. Exactly. And how that made you feel because... I'm going to guess every single person here, when you're given advice that you didn't ask for, it makes you want to run in the opposite direction. Correct? I don't like it. I don't like being told what to do, period. Oh my gosh, same here. Period. So think about that and that approach. So it's two very different scenarios when someone is coming to you asking for advice versus you see someone that you love struggling but they're not asking for advice. Does that make sense? For sure. Two very different scenarios. So think back on that. When in your life have you been given advice that you didn't ask for, and how did that make you feel? Probably didn't make you feel awesome. Probably wanted you to, or you probably wanted to like the exact opposite of what they told you. So I'll give you a couple examples just for my own life of when this happened. And this is how I learned this lesson because it is something that I really, really struggled with. So first a time in my life, and I know you remember this, when I was given advice that I wasn't even looking for. I didn't want it all. So it was Christmas 2010, and I was so sick. I was in the hospital, and I had an infection in my blood, which had come from my intestines. My intestines were so inflamed at that point that things were just passing in and out, so I had infection in my blood from that. And my Crohn's was not in remission. The medications that I was on for so many years were doing more harm than good at that point because my immune system was so low. And I had pneumonia for like, it was like the third or fourth time that year. Is that all? It was not fun. (laughs) You were in a very good spot at the time. What brought me to the hospital too was actually an obstruction in my intestines. So this is what led to me having surgery. So during that hospital stay, I knew that I had to have surgery to have my entire large intestine removed. Very major operation that I'd been putting off for quite a while that my doctor had been talking to me about. At that point, I knew that I would not last much longer. My body was really starting to fail me. And so I knew that I needed to make surgery or have surgery. So during the hospital stay, as you remember, I made that really, really hard decision to have this surgery that saved my life. Also during the hospital stay on Christmas night, I had someone that I knew come to visit me who instantly threw me off because she had a cold 
um, and was wearing a mask, but I had like no immune system, keep in mind. And the only reason she came to visit me is because she was telling me that having surgery was the wrong choice and that I needed to do all these other things like take charcoal, basically like all natural treatments, like doing the conventional route was going to do me so much harm and I needed to do things her way. And she had all these ideas for me. Granted, she was coming with love. And I know that now at the time it didn't feel like it. It felt like I was being attacked and I was making the wrong decision. And I wasn't looking for anyone else's opinions, ideas. I knew what was best for my body and I knew what I needed at that time. So that caused me to instantly shut that person out. How close were you with this person? Not very close. It was like a distant person in my life that I'd okay. seen. I can't even remember the last time I'd seen so them. So it's not that. like... They appeared out of nowhere. Wasn't like, like a best friend or something No, I did close. no idea they were coming in the hospital. They came by themselves. Okay. I can't even remember the last time I'd seen them before that. Maybe a year ago, you know, before that. Um, so it's not like, yeah, it was like my best friend or like my mom or something. And again, I know they were coming with love, but they had the belief that they knew what was right for me and I didn't. That's what instantly threw me off and that's what made me want to run in the other direction. <laughs> not, not to mention the state that you're in exactly. mentally, emotionally. When you're in a hospital too, it's a, it's very, very vulnerable. You have no privacy. Like everything is taken away from you. I just felt so vulnerable and so weak and so sick. And it was this person coming in telling me I was wrong if they were right. Nobody likes that. I don't. Right? No. <laughs> no. So that was one of the many times that someone has come to me with advice that I wasn't ready for and didn't ask for. The other side of that that I understand is back when Mike and I changed our diet and we started feeling really, really good. This was back in 2013. And granted, he was already healthy, but he was like taking his health to a next level. I was very sick and I was starting to be healthy. That kind of does something to you sometimes. Do you want to share your experience of what that's like? How you kind of want to like, sh like shout it from the well, rooftops? Well, when we, you have to realize that we were coming from a position of Kristen being so sick, you know, me having to carry up and down the stairs, her not being able to do any of the normal things. Totally. I spent right? most of my time in so bed. So we went from not being able to do anything and spending all of this time in doctor's appointments and hospitals to all of a sudden feeling amazing and finally starting to get outside together and walk and eventually jog. And, and what it felt like to me was it was almost like we found like this holy grail, like <laughs> we stumbled across this. We know the answer. And answers. it saved us and we want to save you. And it wasn't about like we wanted to share with everyone, not because we wanted to say, hey, I'm right, you're wrong, or hey, I'm super smart and you're an idiot because you haven't figured this out. It was never about that. It was just about, oh my God, I'm feeling so good. Mm -hmm. And you can feel so good too. All you got to do is this. And in sharing the excitement, um, it just comes off the wrong way. It just doesn't come off as intended. Mm -hmm. um, my personal belief, at least. Absolutely. To most. It it. It's meant to be a great thing with great intentions, but doesn't necessarily end up being that. Yes. Right? I'll give you the perfect example of this. Okay. So the opposite side of that first story is I had someone in my life who I love very dearly who was really, really sick and just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And this was shortly after Mike and I thought, like, we would found the answer. We knew what was helping everyone, this and that. And I approached this person and tried to get them to change their diet and tried to get them to make lifestyle changes. And they're not asking me for my opinion. And so it was a huge wake up call for me because it took me time to realize this, but it was one day it clicked into place that I realized that I would be selfish to try to interrupt anyone else's journey because I hold the deep belief that we are all here to experience our own journeys and to learn our own lessons. And that is not my job to do it for anyone else. 
And I know how hard it is, especially when it's someone you love so dearly, because you just want them to be healthy. You want them to thrive. You want to see them feeling good because it hurts your heart so much to see someone you love suffering and sick. But unfortunately, the only, only way that you can get someone to change is to simply lead by example, and then it is their choice if they want to eventually come along and ask you questions, or they want to do their own thing and just keep learning their own way. There is no right or wrong in this, um, and I know how hard it is, but that's the lesson I learned the very, very hard way that I had to let go and let that person learn their own way. Because the truth is, too, I came into it again with so much love, but thinking that I knew, I like had the answers for this person and I knew what they needed when the reality is I don't. I have no idea what anyone else needs. Yeah. I have no idea what maybe other. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Totally. But, it's like, I have no idea what diet changes their are going to work. Exactly. And just like you said, that's the hardest part. And that's the hardest part for me is like, you have someone you really care about or love and you, you see their suffering and you almost feel like you have the answer. You, you want to take the suffering away because you know how bad it hurts. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like to feel like shit and you want to do whatever it takes to prevent people from feeling like that. And that's, that's why we share what we do. But we need to realize that it's just, it's their journey. And let's just take as an example, like trying to get someone to change their diet when they're sick. It's like, that you are asking a lot. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get someone to change their diet is freaking huge. And I feel like even if you convince someone like, oh, you need to do this, I feel like that wouldn't work nearly as well as if someone was observing you and like, wow, I see, let's see, I, say I was that individual and I looked at you, I'm like, wow, you're getting healthy. Look at, you seem to be so happy. You seem to be enjoying everything. I'd like a piece of that. I would like to learn how to do that. And then people are going to be more motivated, inspired. But if you just come at people and start asking them to do things, you're going to push them away. Because exactly. that's how yes. it is with me. And what's funny, too, is even if you just change the terminology, it can completely shift everything, too. So I'm very careful about when I want to, like, give someone some advice. And usually, especially now with what I know, I don't really give unsolicited advice. But if I did, I would say something along the lines of, um, you could always consider looking into or... Exactly. Or I suggest looking into this if you're yeah. interested and then you just leave it at that mm -hmm. and if they want to know anymore they'll ask you exactly you know and then that's how you give love mm -hmm. that's how you give love while still allowing them to live their life and live their journey and do what's best for them at that time absolutely that is so well said <laughs> well thank you <laughs> thank you baby how many points do i get uh, a million <laughs> So this is a huge one, I would say, especially for I have very often parents reaching out, trying to help their adult children who are sick change um, or people who have a spouse or a partner that doesn't want to live the same lifestyle they do. Literally, like leading by example is such a beautiful gift that you can give. That's what that's the only thing Mike and I do is we just lead by example Everyone in our lives knows that we are there. Anytime they have questions or want to talk about anything or want any advice, they know we're there to help. And that's all that we need to do. I'm fully convinced it's the best thing you can do is just yeah. lead by example. People will pay attention if they see something that they like or that they're interested in. And then they'll, they'll ask you about it. Exactly. It's so annoying when people try to convince you to do something and just keep poking <laughs> at it. I really, really so don't annoying. like when people do that, like give unsolicited opinions or advice. You are like, <laughs> well, I just, you just need to be very smart about how you do it. Or like the worst is when people like start making hints at what they want to talk about. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I feel like it's just easier just to. Let people do their thing. Yeah. Let people live their journey. Like, and you can let, that's kind of gives you permission to let go as well because you realize that you can't change them no matter what you do. You try to force someone into doing something, I can pretty much guarantee they're going to go the other way. 
I don't want people to suffer. What we do and what we share is because we want to provide tools to those who are willing to listen in order to make changes in their lives so that they don't have to suffer. Absolutely. Of yeah. course. Yep. Yeah. That's why we're creating this show. Totally. Exactly. It'll be a great resource because it's a question I get all the time. And it's something that's not easy to answer, like typing out, or it just, you know, takes too long. And I can always point them to this. So absolutely. Thank you for this gift. Absolutely. It's <laughs> it's it really is a simple answer. Mm-hmm. Really. It's it is difficult in that you do you may have to take a step back and let people live their life, but it's just like you got to let them live their journey because even if you did give them the answer, it's like who's to say they won't experience that problem in another way? Because I feel like within life we all have our challenges and it's up to us to figure out mm-hmm. like how to fix these things and how to live. I, I don't feel like if you knew someone just like super smart and knew like the answer to everything and they're just like, eat like this, work out like this. And you had all the answers and you just like did exactly what they said. I don't know if life will let you do that. I don't, I I feel like the point of life is learning the lessons and finding your own way to do things. All of that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I talked before on the show about my previous opiate addiction several years ago and, um, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but looking back at it now, now that I'm able to think clearly, it's like, I learned so much from that experience Mm -hmm. and it, it has molded and shaped me into who I am today. And if I didn't go through that, I don't know if I'd be able to have all of these conversations. You know, I don't know if I'd be able to think as clearly. It's just something that for whatever reason I was destined to go through. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I, I had to go through it. I had to go through it on my own. I had to f- figure out what worked and what didn't on my own. Mm-hmm. You know, no one was going to do it for me. I had to do it for myself. And that's that's what we're getting at. It's like, trust me, if we could, we'd want to fix all these things. Oh my gosh, all of these course. people. Who wouldn't? Right? Right? And it's just love. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's just, th- it, that's all it is. It's love. And I feel like that's, that's what this question is all about. It's people reaching out like, hey, I love this person. How can I fix this? Mm-hmm. You know, How can I make their lives easier? How can I make their lives easier? Another thing just to kind of ponder is thinking, you know, when you see someone going through something really, really hard, like when I was really, really sick, it seemed like such a desperate and hard and dark time, but it is what brought me here. I would not be here without that. So if someone had tried to like forced me into all these diet changes before I was ready, before I was ready to learn those lessons, I wouldn't be who I am today. So just keep that in mind that while it might look really, really hard, like I'm often telling parents who reach out to me, who especially like their kids have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, that I can promise you this will make your child stronger in the long run. That's what it'll do. And I know it's hard to see them going through something really difficult, but when you just allow them to live their journey, they're going to come out on the other side, most likely a better person, a stronger person, more resilient. Absolutely. Resilient. Yeah. For sure. When you look at it that that way, it's a little bit easier to step back. But yeah, it was a, it was a very, very hard lesson to learn. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Anything else as far as that question goes? I feel like we wrapped it up. And we know that you are almost always, if not always, coming at this with love. So we know that it's just, it's, it's a hard lesson, but the more you can let go and let someone live their life and just lead the way, just be a positive example for them, the better it's going to be for everyone. That's been one of the hardest lessons that I've had to learn is to be able to take a step back, allow people to live their lives and allow them to come to you for guidance if they need it. Yep. That's been hard because I love people and I'm always like, I mean, I worked as a firefighter paramedic, you know, for like 14 years and all we did was we'd Go and solve problems. <laughs> you took care of people. You know, you take care You're of people. My whole that. life, even serving tables and working in the restaurant industry for s- 
seven years before that. My life has been in service. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. I'm here. I'm here to share. I'm here for all of you. It's it's tough, but we need to realize we're all on our own journey. Mm -hmm. I don't want to beat a dead horse anymore, but it's just that is the answer that I believe in my heart 100%. So. Whoever came up with a beat a dead horse... So sad. I'm sorry for saying that. <laughs> I don't. I, I never really thought about it until you said that right now. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. It's kind of a shitty metaphor, I guess. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I don't want to. Okay, rewind. I don't want to know. keep saying the same thing, but <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you're right. All righty. Okay. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you, my love. I really hope that's helpful. Um, if you have any other questions regarding this, please put them down below. Absolutely. Um, we want to start attacking some of the most popular questions that we get all of the time. Because mm -hmm. we do often address it on Kristen's Instagram, because that's where we have the most people. But we want to be able to have these videos to where we can point people in that direction. It's like a permanent resource. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So any questions that you have, ask below. Let us know. All right. And we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. It's a great short episode. Yeah. All right. All right. Peace, Thanks everybody. For being here.